And good evening. Uh, my name is David, and tonight uh, we're uh, here for our final session in this run of Good Society. Um, as I said, this is the final session, so if you want to find out more about the game itself, then I'd suggest going back to the beginning if you haven't already. But um, this is uh, Good Society's game by um, uh, Story Brewers Gaming of um, kind of Regency era, <clears throat> based on Regency era novels. Uh, this game is being hosted. Um, uh, as it was arranged through the Gauntlet, which is an online role-playing group. Uh, we get together for games like this. We also have podcasts. We have a monthly gaming magazine. Um, and we have a website where you can find information on all that stuff at uh, gauntlet-rpg.com. Uh, again, I'll put a link to that in, in the messages down below. Um, but with all that said and done, we're going to jump pretty much straight into things this evening so we can try and get everything wrapped up in this uh, this final session. But I will just go around and uh, do, again, as ever, just quick introductions. Uh, tell us a little bit about your character and what happened uh, last time. Um, so I'll start, as ever, uh, with, uh, with yourself, Kieran, if that's okay. Okay, I am playing, uh, sorry, Kieran, um, he, him, I'm playing Eva Grace, uh, Gracefield, uh, she, her, the um, the stalwart um, ethical pillar in, in a house with no pillars at all. It's basically just one pillar somehow holding up a little bit of the roof. Uh, despite the fact she has entirely fell beneath herself, uh, she talked by, encouraged by the Reverend uh, to try to actually disinherit her older brother. Uh, she's involved in various schemes, gathering evidence of his misadventures in Europe. Uh, which she then has proceeded to loss, uh, lose at a garden party, and has now ended in the hands of uh, people who are angry with Nathaniel, specifically um, Melody uh, Modesty Montgomery, her, his spur, one of his many spurned lovers. <laughs> uh, and this, of course, has left Eva utterly distraught and fearing that she is not definitely not a good Christian woman, and she is wondering what on earth she can possibly do, as in she her her bris risks bringing down the entire family, etc., etc., etc. Uh, so she's not too happy. She still has a peacock. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, um, uh, Anders, if you'd like to uh, tell us a little bit about uh, who you're playing and what you got up to last time. Yeah, uh, I'm Anders, he, him. I'm playing Nathaniel Gracefield, also he, him. Uh, and he is the actual owner of the peacock. He just doesn't take care of it. That's what Eva does. Uh, um, and uh, he is the son and the oldest son, uh, only son, I think, and the heir of the Gracefields. Um, he is trying to mend uh, the rift between his family and the Nash family, uh, which he did not cause. Uh, someone else did. Uh, and uh, last time he took some big steps forward uh, on that uh, by um, start I mean, initiating an engagement, I guess, uh, with uh, uh, Lady Abigail Nash, who we will hear from, or at least about very soon. That's about it, I think. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. And next is myself. Um, I am playing, um, uh, well, I'm obviously David, as mentioned already, he is he, him pronouns, and I'm playing Isaac Arkwright. Um, Isaac is uh, the son of a mill owner, um, has sort of come into the, uh, come to the village to, uh, um, come to the village to make uh, acquaintances with the, uh, the, the, the good and the great, um, find, find a, a good, uh, um, a good, uh, well-regarded wife, um, all, all that sort of, uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, so last time um, we saw um, Isaac um, uh, being confronted um, about um, his uh, um, relationship with Lemster Marwood, uh, based on the the rumours that have been been swirling around about them, um, which which seemed to cause uh, somewhat. Uh, of a uh, a uh, um, a moment of crisis for uh, Isaac, um, we also saw him making a, um, a perhaps not entirely uh, uh, romantic offer of marriage to uh, Lady Abigail, um, and I think that's broadly it. 
I might be forgetting something. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's where we were last time. Um, so uh, yeah, David, if you'd like to uh, to to tell us a bit about uh, uh, your character and, and what they got up to. Uh, you bet. Yeah, I'm David. Uh, he, him pronouns, and I am playing as Lady Abigail Nash, uh, who is uh, it, it recently, as over the course of the game, um, moved in with her um, dreadful and and uh, kind but air-headed cousin um, because her father was incarcerated and she has been spending a great deal of time trying to seek revenge for his seemingly unjust incarceration um, by taking vengeance on Eva Gracefield. However, she has recently laid those plans aside in order to form a romantic relationship with Nathaniel Gracefield, Eva's brother. Things seem to be looking up for her, and yet uh, it seems like Dad is going to be back in the picture very shortly, and that might shake things up just a little bit. Excellent, thank you. And uh, yeah, last but not least, uh, Robbie, if you'd like to um, uh, introduce uh, introduce who you'll be playing, and um, uh, we we kind of yeah, just within fiction last time for our cycle, uh, we just sort of established that Lempster had been you know called away on on business of a mysterious nature, um, and and uh, no, no more than that. So feel free to detail out uh, whatever you'd like. Uh, we we will, as I said, we will be going straight into a um, an epistolary phase, so so uh, feel free to use that to uh, uh, explore what you may have been up to in the intervening time. Um, but yeah, okay. So I my name is Robbie. I use uh, he him pronouns, and I'm playing uh, Lempster Marwood, who uses uh, he him uh, pronouns. Uh, you know, it's, it's actually completely in keeping with uh, I think Lempster's character that he would. Uh, go mysteriously absent and uh, people would be kind of speculating as to what exactly Lempster would be uh, up to because uh, in my youth I, I took a tour of Europe but it was a rather prolonged tour went on much much longer than uh, would would be uh, respectable and uh, this led to I, all sorts of uh, rumors and gossip as, about what he was up to uh, it is fair to say that one of the things that he was up to was he had a uh, a uh, relationship with uh, um, uh, with Nathaniel Gracefield uh, while he was there, and uh, Lemster seems to be coming to the coming to terms with uh, the fact that uh, you know there are many uh, many people who are pursuing uh, Nathaniel Gracefield. Uh, Lempster has also been uh, trying to uh, make some amends for uh, the way that he treated Isaac Ar Arkwright uh, in the back, uh, that he uh, found Isaac to be, in the past, found him to be uh, a, a convenient uh, scapegoat when his family was uh, getting on uh, Lempster's case for, um, for uh, not handling uh, the family money or the family reputation perhaps very well. And I guess one last thing is he's um, uh, he is childhood friends with uh, a young woman named uh, Esther Battle and uh, Esther's family and Lempster's family maybe have ideas of uh, Lempster and uh, Esther marrying. Uh, Lempster doesn't necessarily think that that's uh, a great idea, but uh, he also is uh, sensitive to uh, Esther's uh, feeling and her reputation. Brilliant, thank you very much. So yeah, um, as, as mentioned, um, our, first, um, our first phase for this evening will be the final epistolary phase of our, of our preceding uh, cycle. Um, so um, as ever, we have, um, our various different uh, options here for what we can do with this um, can write letters um, from from one of our characters. Can write sort of a journal entry as well. Any any sort of like that written communication type stuff is cool. Um, in addition, we can have um, uh, um, any uh, those some of the weather vignettes, which allow us to kind of detail out just a little short scene of um, uh, our character getting up to something and dealing with a particular. Uh, aspect of their life depending on which uh, vignette is chosen 
Um, also, we can have weird dreams that, that may or may not be prophetic and telling about the character. Um, so, with that said, um, would does anyone have an idea for the first um, um, epistolary scene they would like to uh, to establish? I could, I've got an idea for one from last session, which I, I can jump in with. Um, and this is going to this is going to involve some creative use of tokens, and it's in a weird situation where I'm playing against my other character, so like the bartering stuff gets a bit weird. So like, someone stop me if you think this is too much. I'm spending a token to be able to the unlikely event of being able to actually copy Nathaniel's handwriting. Is that okay, Nathaniel? As in, this is the sort you can. I picture Eva having learned how to do it to basically fake all manner of things that you know he would have to sign <laughs> just for the nature of the uh, the event. So uh, a token probably passed in the Faniel, or um, which is great. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, and I write the letter that goes, um, and it's kind of dear modesty, and it's written in Nathaniel's hand. I do not think. Um, there's something I must confess to you in his most difficult confess. I'm afraid my sister is entirely capable of forging anything in my anything in my hand. And, um, and in fact, you know, she's gifted in many ways and it segues into her actual handwriting at this point. And I have an awful confession to make. All the evidence, I have been trying to disinherit my brother. Uh, I've been faking evidence about his adventures on the actual, um, on the continent, as far as, I, you know, they are entirely fake. Uh, I'm, I believe, you know, I understand that you've come into possession with some of my things. I was hoping to actually blackmail my brother uh, and keep this privately in the family. I have failed utterly. I throw myself in your mercy. Uh, you now know something, an awful, uh, unchristian secret about me. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I beg your forgiveness. And I'd like to spend a token on monk uh, on the modesty to make her believe it. So. In other words, that you know, as far as she's concerned, oh no, I'm, and this is now she has blackmail information on me, <laughs> and yeah. possibly, and possibly can ruin my name in society. And I basically took a big bullet for my brother. It's basically the, uh, the this is her kind of try, you know, to step back into being a character. This is her trying to like, how can I, how on earth can I actually save my brother? Oh no, I'll sacrifice myself. That's the very evil way of doing things. Yeah, that sounds that sounds good to me. I'll pass the token to. Modesty, and I'm down to zero tokens. All right. Wow. <laughs> and I have a, I have ten tokens. <laughs> so, uh, so that's my win condition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wasn't that? Do I do I gain a level or something? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can you can gain a level. Uh, <laughs> you're you're now uh, you're now an earl. Um, congratulations. <laughs> Uh, yeah, awesome. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and um, yes, yeah, uh, so does, does does anyone uh, else have um, an idea for a um, um, a letter that they would like to um, address, or any other scene they would like to uh, to? Um... Yeah, I'll I'll do uh, another one from from uh, Sydney to Isaac. Um, uh, Isaac, since I have not yet have had any positive uh, news regarding uh, your, um, uh, your expected engagement, I shall be arriving uh, presently to uh, take matters into my own hands. Um, Expect me within uh, a few days of this letter's arrival, as I have to settle some uh, some uh, minor business uh, first. But uh, I shall um, I shall be along uh, very soon. Uh, your father, um, Sydney Arkwright. Perfect. Thank you. Um, awesome. Um... I think um, I will um, uh, 
uh, I think, yeah, I will um, go for a letter um, that I think will be to um, uh, to Lempster um, uh, that will be quite, quite short um, in all honesty, a little more than a note. Um, but uh, it says, um, uh, dear Mr. Marwood, um, some matters have come to my attention that I think um, uh, might necessitate our meeting um, um, please uh, please um, uh, do come and uh, um, uh, we can meet up at the um, 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 at the, uh, at the, the the local inn um, uh, it is a matter of some um, urgency and delicacy um uh yours sincerely uh isaac Arkwright. right i have an idea for my first one um it involves a negative reputation tag because after my um dramatic throwing of myself at nathaniel um at the conclusion of the last session um i'm back to having a uh some kind of negative reputation condition, I think it is. Um, and I think for this one, I would actually like to um, be kicked out of my house. Um, I've been staying with the Honeyfields and I think now would be a good time to um, be evicted now that, uh, I, I, kind of making this the lowest point in Lady Abigail's character arc. She's given up on her father. She has thrown herself at Nathaniel who is a very good man and at the same time it's a grace field and now she doesn't get to live with the honey fields anymore so I am asking and I'm willing to throw a token at anybody who would be willing uh, is there anybody who would allow me to move in with them just for the last cycle of the game or any NPC that would allow me to move in with them So I'm, so I'm just doing the math because Eva does know about Ab Nash and uh, like Abigail and Nathaniel because that's that's at least part of the reason. At least it's, you know the whole running off. Like I'm trying to remember from last session, there's at least some awareness that stuff is happening. I, 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 I think you're being more honest. The whole thing with uh, with uh, the uh, hedge maze, um, but. I'm not sure if, I mean, I mean, they haven't formalized an engagement, right? Yeah. There's no formalized engagement. Um, I don't know unless, unless you, we would like to say that word has spread deliberately. I don't know that anybody saw us out in that intimate moment out on the moors during the yeah. thunderstorm. Um, I, I, I mean, could, if, but, if Abby has told Tabitha, then probably everyone knows by yeah. now. I think I know the rules assume rumors spread very easily. <laughs> um, um, no, I was just like, because I have no grudge against, sorry, Eva has no grudge against Abigail. <laughs> so, you know, no good Christian nature would entirely, but if not the Reverend, I'd imagine, but either, uh, the Reverend or Susan, uh, Susanna strikes me as the obvious ones. Would that be terribly scandalous to have um, Lady Abigail living under the same roof as Nathaniel prior to marriage? Yeah, probably. I, I was going to say that that I, I think Lemster would be happy to to give uh, refuge to uh, to uh, to Miss Nash, but uh, that that might be Lemster. Uh, you know, is, I kind uh, of like that because you're Nathaniel's <laughs> ex. <laughs> yeah, um, let, let, I'm I'm cool with that. Um, we'll, you're you're welcome to a token if you would like it. Okay. Um, just because I have eight and you've been so um, generous. <laughs> so um, very well then. I suppose my my um, letter is going to be this uh, very pleading, tear-stained mess of a letter that arrives smudged in the midst of a thunderstorm to Lemster's residence. Um, in so many words, saying, um, uh, "My dearest Lemster, it is my um, great regret to inform you that I have been unjustly cast out of my own home by my aunt and cousin." Um, I have nowhere to live and I am 
deeply, uh, deeply in need of refuge. I would be um, most indebted to you if you would be willing to allow me to stay with you even for just a few days while I figure out what more permanent uh, housing would, would look like. And they just kind of going on about that. But the whole thing is smug. It's hard to read. I've been sobbing like a mess over it um, all night long as I was writing it. And that'll be the, the letter, basically just my appeal to Lemster. Yeah. Um, so, so, um, what, what Lady Abigail is like when, when, when she goes there, is, is this hidden from everybody as to like where, where she's now staying? Is that something that she wants to keep, uh, out of the, is this like a, going to be very secret, um, or is, is this something that people would I, catch on I, to? I envision it as being uh, secret, and yet, I mean, as soon as she uses it out in public, the first thing anyone is going to say is, where are you staying now? We heard about everything. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's a secret, but probably not for terribly long. Okay. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, um, uh, Lemster, if you have, uh, have an idea for your first, uh, first epistolary scene. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there's part of me that wonders whether Lempster would be, would need to send a letter to, um, I mean, g given that development, whether it would make sense for Lempster to write, um, a letter to somebody, uh, assuring them that Lady Abigail, uh, is going to be fine, um, Yeah, so I mean, uh, I guess I could have a letter, Lempster, to um, would it be, make better sense to to have it to Florence or to Tabitha? Probably Tabitha, I think. I mean, Florence is the one who kicked her out, so she probably <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> doesn't care that much. <laughs> Unless he's writing to to admonish her on a thoughtless <laughs> yeah. way. Yeah, I, I think uh, a brief letter to Tabitha, um, and we we could imagine this letter, um, you know, coming uh, shortly after, uh, you know, Lady Abigail has has left, uh, and and it's just a brief letter to to say. Um, uh, Tabitha, um, I, I know that your, um, your, uh, cousin's departure is, uh, uh, something that, uh, may, may be, uh, causing you to, to worry or to, to feel perplexed, um, that, uh, you know, I, I, I would assure you that, um, no, no harm will, will come to, to, to Lady Abigail. She simply uh, needs a, a little time of uh, separation for uh, the passions to uh, cool uh, a little bit, um, but uh, you, you should rest assured that um, your, your sister is uh, going to be uh, taken care of and uh, that uh you you will shortly be be able to uh uh you know see, see her talk to her again and i am uh i i i know that she she is also uh wanting to uh to to set your um to set your uh worries uh at at ease that um you know although that this current situation is is certainly uh awkward um that that there will be uh, brighter um, brighter moments ahead, and after after a a period of storminess in the weather, there certainly will be uh, a calm that will be uh, uh, will be restored. Awesome! Yeah, thank you. Um, and does uh, does anyone have um, a um, uh, actually? No, I I have an idea for 
um, uh, um, for a second one, so I will go ahead with that. Um, I am going to write um, a letter to um, uh, this will be from Susanna Collingwood to um, uh, to Florence Honeyfield. Um, and I think I will, this probably does cost a, another token, and I think this token is probably going to go to, I'm going to say probably Abigail uh, in this case. It's a bit of a toss-up between Abigail and Lempster, but I think this is more directly affecting uh, Abigail at this, this point. Um, and... Um, um the um uh letter uh will 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 go uh, um dear mrs uh uh dear mrs honeyfield um i am writing um with some uh distressing news um uh, i um i am afraid to say as um as i am sure you know um being uh being the um wife to our our good uh um, our good reverend i i try and avoid um becoming too uh too much embroiled in the salacious gossip that uh um uh, travels uh, travels around this uh, this village um however i could not help but um overhear that it would seem your um, cousin, uh, your niece, rather, sorry, um, uh, Lady uh, uh, Lady Abigail, was seen visiting the house of uh, of um, uh, Mister Marwood, uh, seemingly to stay there for a while. I, of course, have um, uh, would not uh, doubt the uh, morals of a as fine a young girl as uh, your niece but if rumors are already starting to spread then clearly something uh, must be done to stop this uh, uh, this outrage um uh i can only hope that it is merely the um uh, the 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 uh, um gossip of idle tongues but i could not uh, as a good christian hold myself um uh without um uh, if if there were to be some immorality afoot um and you know, signs off um so yeah uh does uh, does anyone else have have um an idea for a, um another uh, their second um, epistolary um i've got a um just sort of whether interlude small vignette that I would insert here. Um, I'd like to have it be Lady Abigail making her way to Lempster's residence. Um, may I spend a token uh, and give it to Florence um, to see if perhaps the public opinion around Abigail's eviction is sympathetic to Abigail. Um, this is seen as something that is a bit cold hearted um, on, on the part of Florence. Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely cool. I like that. Okay, I'll get rid of that token on my end and that goes to Florence. Um, oh, and sorry, I forgot, I'm, I'm not, I don't play Florence, so. Uh, well, I'll, I mean, whoever the, Yeah, sorry, I'll throw Florence. that over. I, I was uh, confusing myself. Yeah, that, that's perfectly fine. Oh yeah, yeah. Robbie, you've, got, you've yeah. got Florence, okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, what I'll do then is, <laughs> It, it's going to be almost like self-aware silly, but essentially this dawn scene of Lady Abigail looking somewhat longingly back at the Honeyfield residence where she has been for so long. Um, and she makes her way um, with a servant on horseback with her things and luggage and so forth, um, trotting down the road to Lempster's residence. And along the way, you get this scene of sympathetic townsfolk like waving her off as almost it's a funeral procession or someone is going off to war. But there's this very like overdramatic 
reaction from the townspeople as Abigail marches nobly to her execution, practically, when really she's moving a few blocks down the road to Lepster's residence, and it's not that big of a deal. Awesome, I like it. Thank you. Um, yeah, does, does uh, uh, someone else have their second one in mind? Yeah, I I have one from from Tabitha to Isaac. Um, dearest uh, Mr. Arkwright, uh, I'm sure you've heard that uh, Mother has, uh, in a terribly cruel way, uh, evicted my my dearest cousin Abigail uh, from. Uh, our our home, her home now should be. Um, in, I, I, she has um, been very very kindly been given a, a place to stay with uh, Lemster Marwood, and I, since I know uh, you are good friends with both of them, I uh, wish you could. Uh, Go for a visit and see that she's uh, that everything is uh, all right with her. As mother refuses to let me uh, visit uh, Abigail myself. Um, P.S. Uh, still looking forward to uh, the Latin lessons. Um, yours, uh, Abigail. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, uh, Robbie, um, uh, Kieran, either of you have have uh, idea for your, your next uh, epistolary scene? I've got one I can jump in quite easily. Yeah, go it's, for it. It's from Lord Brutus Davenport, uh, writing to Lempster. He goes, Lempster, you cad. <laughs> I've been informed that you've left town. I presume you're running away from our jewel. But I understand you've returned, which is lucky because it is just in time. Would you prefer swords or pistols? Or some exciting combination of both. I have, a, I have a selection if you wish to choose. I have them brought from my home. Uh, I, I, I look to see you there early in the morning and well dressed. Yours sincerely, uh, Lord Brutus Davenport, brackets, the man who will kill you in a fair duel, close brackets. P.S. Satisfaction! Exclamation mark. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so uh, so so Lumster, do do you have uh, an idea for your uh, your next epistolary uh, thing? Yeah, I, I have some different ideas. Um, I uh, um, I was also kind of like looking for. Uh, I would like to get into some of the token uh spending uh spirit um um so how about this um can i spend a token um so that um, um, so that they would know, like it says you can spend a resolve token if you want your major character to know something difficult or unlikely. Um, could I spend one so that I would know about uh, Susanna's uh, communication to Florence? Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, that's that's perfectly within the the kind of um, um, realms of, of yeah, what they're for. Yeah, I mean, maybe some some servant uh, who I, I know about was able to communicate. What, what you know, but uh, so so Lempster is is aware of that uh, communication, and then. Um, I'm also so I'm I'm gonna write to uh, Susanna, um, and 
it says you can trade your positive reputation tag in for a resolve token to bring, um, you know, one of my uh, uh, reputation tags is that, that I'm uh, well connected. Uh, so how would that work? Like if 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 I if I'm going to write to uh, Susanna to try to kind of put her a bit in her place, and I'm going to pull the card of my uh, connections, which are are clearly quite a bit higher than hers, and that that right uh, can perhaps create a lot of problems for the Collingwoods because of their their um, yeah their sway. Uh, maybe your uh, maybe your friends with the uh, with the local bishop. Uh, uh, yeah, I think be. I think yes. Yeah. So, so how does that work in terms of spending things? Like if, uh, I'm, if I'm kind of calling in that card. Yeah. So essentially, um, you would uh, you would mark off that that tag uh, that sort of goes away essentially. Um, okay. But yeah, you you essentially get like a, a phantom um, uh, resolve token that you can spend um, as you would a normal resolve token. Um, so, so yeah, you could basically, um, yeah, you use that to say that, yeah, um, you, 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 yeah, right, uh, um, yeah, yeah, you've got, got the, the, you know, the, the, the bishop, uh, on the side and you can cause problems for them or, or, or whatever. Yeah. So, so I think Lempster, uh, you know, writes a, uh, a, a, rather curt and angry letter to uh, Susanna Collingwood uh, and, and says, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Collingwood, um, please do not um, assume that I am unaware of your uh, attempts to uh, besmirch uh, my family's name, as well as the, the names of, of other good uh, people uh, in this uh, area. Um, you may not uh, realize, but um, my, my family is on uh, close and intimate terms with uh, uh, the Bishop of, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll kind of come up with, uh, you know, uh, you know, of Raven, you know, Heights, uh, some, some, you know, uh, area close by. And, um, you know, I, you, you may be aware that, um, that I was uh, perhaps mysteriously absent uh, recently. Uh, I will uh, not, divulge to you all that uh, I was engaged in during that uh, absence, but I, I will let you know that that part of it was uh, sent spent in the in the household of uh, the bishop. And so uh, he has become very well apprised of the uh, the meddlings of of you and uh, your family. And uh, I must say he is rather um, rather distraught at uh, the, the, the way that uh, some of the affairs uh, has been, uh, have been conducted uh, with respect to the, uh, the vicarage that we are in. Excellent, excellent. Um, perfect. So uh, that brings us to the end of this epistolary stage. So um, the next uh, next thing we have to do is just our um, sort of wrap up phase. So I will go through this. Uh, so I'm just bringing up the PDF which I've got to open. Um, Yeah, so um, upkeep phase. So, oh yes, um, we have our final, that's one thing I forgot. Uh, we have monologue tokens. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm thinking maybe we'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll refresh monologue tokens for those 
who have used them, but I think we won't use them up in this upkeep phase just on the basis that we're, we're, we're right at the beginning of a session. I think it'll be more interesting to, to just keep on and then pick them up again um, in, in a moment. So yeah, the, the, everyone can refresh their, their, their monolog tokens if they have used them, but we won't, we won't use up uh, any remaining ones at the moment. Um, uh, the next thing we, uh, we all gain one resolve token. Um, for our, our primary characters. Um, we then, um, we're gonna check in on, on inner conflicts again. Um, so uh, Robbie, as you weren't here last time, just to um, uh, just to, to sort of go again over how these work. Um, just under where your reputation is, you'll see you've got the two columns for your, um, um, for your, your inner conflict. Um, and you'll see down the down the middle, you've got the different lines there with a little tick box next to each side. And we're essentially looking to see if you feel like you have fulfilled that action for either side of your um, of your inner conflict. Um, so the first one is you took action in pursuit of this. The second one is you sacrificed something important to you for this. Uh, the third one is you hurt or pushed away someone uh, important to you for this. The fourth is you degraded your reputation or went against your conscience for this. And the final one is your actions in pursuit of this side destroyed your chance of successfully pursuing the other. Um, so we'll go around again and I'll just check in with people to see if they think they have fulfilled any further uh, steps on either side of their... Um, uh, of their um, of their inner conflict. Um, so uh, Ava, you currently have the, the first um, box on both of them filled in. Do you feel like you've hit any of the others um, um, here? Shit, I do. I think uh, she's hit two of the their happiness as in yep. she sacrificed something important to us as in she's actively lying and forging. Yeah, yeah. And has she degraded her reputation when against her conscience? Not against her conscience, she's, but she's absolutely degraded her reputation and she's now a known forger. Uh, it's not the top one. In fact, she hasn't reached the top one because she's not like a scarlet letter in public yet. But yeah. like she's at least those two. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd agree. I'd agree. Um, yeah. So you will gain another two um, uh, reputation, uh, sorry, resolve tokens for that. Cool. Uh, brilliant. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. Um, uh, Nathaniel, um, how about yourself? Do you feel like you've fulfilled any further? Of your inner conflict conditions. Yeah, I think I've done some on the honesty side, uh, uh, from uh, from confessing to to Abigail yep. about uh, my various uh, actions. So I think I've taken action, and I think since she reacted somewhat badly to it, I think you hurt or pushed someone away important to you for this. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't long lasting, but there was still a, a I, I'm not sure if it's that one. I, 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 I feel like I think it should be one more at least. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree that that you push someone away. I think it, it I think it does count for that. Um, so yeah, feel free to tick that one as well. And again, you are going to, uh, to resolve tokens for that. Um, yeah, well, I, I mean, for, <laughs> to, to the extent it matters. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I can tell everyone what to do forever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you can just like start. You, you, this is where, you know, you can just go out to France and take on Napoleon and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, so, yeah, um, next is myself. Um, I'm just trying to think back to what I actually did last time. Um, I actually don't feel like I did progress either of them particularly. Um, looking at this, yeah, I don't feel like I've really made any major sacrifices yet or or even hurt or pushed someone away from me yet. Um, so... I yeah I, I don't think I have uh, in all honesty, um, uh, and yeah, um, uh, uh, Lady Abigail, how about yourself? I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I'm looking at uh, what I've already got marked, and I don't know that any of that has 
I mean, I've definitely taken action in pursuit of connectedness and sacrificed things in pursuit of connectedness, but I already have those checked and I don't really think that I met criteria for the unchecked boxes on either end above and beyond that. So I think I'm squared away there unless anybody has thoughts to the contrary. Yeah. Um, I, I, oh, no, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, no, I'm just, sorry. I was, I was saying, and I forgot to press the mute, on mute. You were kicked out of the house, so you have actually disowned your family over this, over connectedness. You hurt and pushed away someone important to you. You know, you've been literally kicked out of Florence Honeyfield's house over your choices. Oh, that'll play. That, that is fair. Yeah, that is fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unintentionally, but it happened yeah. nonetheless. So it, that, that's actually exactly. a good point. Yeah, no, that is okay. fair. That is fair. We can check that. And does that translate into a uh, resolve token? It does indeed. Yep. I need to get through more of these. Okay. Awesome. Uh, cool. Thank you. Um, but yeah, no, that's a, that was a good catch. Um, and um, yep. Yeah, um, uh, Lempster. So obviously you weren't here last time, but feel free if you think you have hit any of your conditions for either side of your inner conflict, like from last time you played or from what what you've we've established in the um uh in your epistolary scene today uh go, go ahead well i i mean the the taking um abigail in um with that uh uh you know I, I know that right people are going to find out about that, and my reputation uh, would, uh, I think, be affected by that. Now, I see that as also being, you know, the reason why Lempster did it would have also been, to some extent, motivated by uh, his relationship with Nathaniel, um, and kind of knowing that oh, there's something now going on between uh, Lady Abigail and Nathaniel. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Um, I there's something else I was going to say. Um, oh yeah, no, I was going to say I think probably as well the um, um, I feel like the your um, uh, fight with. Um, Lord Davenport is probably um, probably fits for taking action in pursuit of per yeah. personal passion as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you're going to resolve tokens for those. Um, awesome. Uh, keep, what else do we have to do? Uh, replace desires if we want to. Honestly, if anyone do really does want to replace their desire at this point, that's fine. But it's probably not the best point in the arc of the game as a whole to do so um we haven't quite hit any expanded backstory actions sadly though we, we're close with a couple of people now um but we might uh, we might be able to look at those when we come around to our um epilogues uh awesome so with that we we end this cycle and we begin our final cycle uh final cycle will be a uh, slightly different to um uh, to that, our, our uh, previous ones. Mostly, we just skip a couple of different, um, uh, different stages. So we don't have another rumor and scandal phase. Um, we skip that last one. We skip our final reputation phase, and we essentially end on the epistolary phase, second epistolary phase. Um, so we are going to start off with our usual decision as to whether we want a, a sort of visitation set of scenes or an event. Um, my personal thoughts here are, especially given a lot of the setup that we've had in um, in the uh, epistolary phase just now, uh, I'm thinking probably uh, some visitation type scenes, a couple of smaller scenes, because there's a lot going on basically, and then maybe bring things back together for one big event at the end. But does does that sound good to people? Yeah, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, with that, um, does anyone have a scene in mind that they would like to kick off with? Well, I, I'd like to see the the scene at the end with uh, Isaac and Lempster uh, following up on the on the letter that uh, Isaac sent. 
yeah sure thing um yeah so i think uh in which case yeah the um i think when when lempster arrives at the inn um isaac will have one of those um and i'm i'm imagining if you've seen um i'm trying to think of a good example of a film where they might have them but in those like old coach inns where they have obviously like the big seating area and stuff but they have like um actual like enclosed wooden booths actually with actual like little half doors usually rather than like an actual full door but they are just like it's sort of like booths that like you get in a restaurant but they just they tend to be actually quite built in sort of thing with little little lidded windows and little little doors um i'm thinking of a specific pub uh called the city of york in um london that i've been to before that has that has some, some of the old ones or replica ones in there um but yeah um that is uh sort of the, the idea that i have and um yeah and i think um um uh isaac is sat in um uh in 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 one of these booths waiting for lempster has ordered a couple of uh flagons of the uh, local ale from the uh, uh from the inn and it's just sort of sat there like it's got that like very ever so slightly on edge uh look to him um that as, as he sat there waiting yeah and and, and i think lempster uh enters the inn and he's um you know, he, he clearly is dressed up to look like, you know, he is, uh, you know, doing something uh, that is supposed to be secret, but right, the, 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 the clothes are, uh, you know, a little uh, too, you know, a little too dark for the occasion, right? He has this, this hat that he has and, and intentionally has this big shadow, right, that comes down over his face and, uh, everybody can can kind of see by looking at his uh, at his black boots that uh, you know he's he's a wealthy guy who's just simply you know kind of putting on something of a of an act or a show to look uh, to look surreptitious, but but it it's not surreptitious in the least, really, right? Uh, you know, everybody kind of looks at him and he kind of uh, you know calls some attention to himself, right, by the way that he's. Uh, dressed like something out of like that you would see on stage or something like that but you know he, yeah. he'd make his way over to the to the booth and and you know before getting in kind of looks around uh very uh obviously looking to see if he's been followed and and then uh slides into the booth excellent um yeah and uh, as i would say uh, um good to see you uh, again um uh Marwood, i i um ordered you uh, an ale um it's 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 rather good here but um they have some passable wine if you'd prefer oh no i think for the for the the, the mood and the tone a, a good ale seems like the appropriate drink but, but what what is it that you uh that you had in mind and you know lempster takes a big uh big drink from his mug there there have been some um foolish uh silly rumors floating around about the two of us that i uh, hardly dare credit or or speak of uh but um i just uh i thought i would let you know um that uh that these these slanders are going about it, 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 implications that we have uh, engaged in inappropriate uh, relations with one another. Well. Um... Uh, well, I must confess that I'm I'm someone who uh, has grown used to being the center of all sorts of uh, rumors and uh, gossip. I, I I've almost gotten to the point where I I seem to like perhaps want to start wearing rumors like part of my attire. Well. Um, I'm I'm glad to hear that uh, you have not been um, 
uh, too off put by it. it uh, I confess it's not something I'm used to having people uh, care enough to gossip about me. So um, it's it's somewhat of a new experience. Uh, and, and and is there any particular person or group that uh, seems to uh, benefit from these from these rumors? Not that I'm aware of. Um, I, I, I just, well, it, it wasn't. Uh, it was, um, in fact, uh, um, Lady Abigail who told me about these these rumors. Uh, obviously, no one has said such words to my face. No, oh, Lady Abigail. Um... She's the one that passed on the, these this information. Um, how exactly did did that come about? Well, she said she was um, uh, um, worried that it might obviously um, cause my my reputation some harm. Uh, we're old friends, as I'm sure you know. Um, she did also mention that there had been perhaps rumors of a similar nature uh, about yourself and uh, another man before. You know, Lempster size. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it, it is unfortunate that we, we live in a, in uh, this little world uh, where everybody seems to have petty concerns about what uh, everybody else is doing and uh, perhaps doesn't pay enough attention to what uh, what is truly important and what they are doing. Um, but, uh, well, I, I, I um, I appreciate you uh, passing this on to me. Is is there is there anything that uh, I could do to help the the matter or situation? Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, Lady Abigail has uh, recently taken up uh, residence at my uh, estate because of uh, some uh, troubling personal matters. Oh, really? That's. Um... I, she had not told me yet, but that's um, most unusual. Um, do do pass on my uh, regards to her when you see her next. And uh, you know, Lemster kind of uh, says, I, "I I certainly will do that." And uh, well, and uh, I I think that uh, you know people had no idea what 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 the uh, I'm sure that, that, that they maybe some, some meddlers noticed uh, us kind of heading off for some of our, um, some of our training sessions. Um, I think for right now, we'll, we'll, we'll pull off a little bit on those uh, training sessions. Uh, I, I am hopeful that maybe uh, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to see uh, the, that your, your training in the uh, gentlemanly art of uh, fighting perhaps uh, bearing some fruit, though. Yes, um, it, it is. Um, it is perhaps for the best that we we t we call a pause to them for the time being. Um, as much as I have enjoyed uh, spending the time with you. Yeah, and I, I think with that, you know, Lumpster will kind of quaff his last uh, mug and then uh, make his way. Uh, in a dramatically surreptitious manner, out of the out of the inn. Excellent, excellent, cool. Um, thank you. And uh, yeah, um, does does anyone else have an idea for the next scene they would like to see? Um, just briefly, it doesn't have to be right now at this moment. But before the. Um, kind of climax of the uh, series, I'd like to have maybe a brief 
heart to heart with Lemster asking kind of what is the actual nature of your relationship with Nathaniel just so it can kind of get that resolved. Yeah, that sounds good. Does that work for you, Lemster? So I think um, maybe it can be a, um, a sort of an evening scene um, done over uh, tea or dinner or something like that. Like it would appear to be maybe even somewhat romantic, but it's the furthest thing from it because Lady Abigail is quite tense. Um, I envision us sitting kind of at a dining table sequestered away from the rest of the servants and various um, other occupants of the house. Um, and I'm I imagine I have maybe some tea or something that I'm really over stirring, like I'm just kind of looking down at it, repeatedly making this whirlpool in a glass, and it's it's clearly done, but I am doing it just to look occupied because I am procrastinating on bringing up the elephant in the room. Um, does that sound like a good enough story for you, or was there anything you would add, Robbie? No, no, that that sounds good, and and I think you know as as Abigail is. Uh, doing this and is clearly on edge. I think, you know, at some point, Lempster reaches out and touches Abigail's hand to kind of calm it down, right? St stop it from stirring and says, Abigail, um, you don't need to uh, mince words or hide your thoughts from me. I mean, clearly there's something on your mind. Uh, we're not in public here. Um, I uh, certainly would uh, want you to feel at ease here, um, but there's there's something that obviously is troubling you. Oh, Lemster, it's 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 not that I have any uh, personal um, grudge or venom against you. It's just that. You, you, you may have heard the rumors that I have fallen in love with Nathaniel Gracefield, and I am, I am torn apart at the realization, at the, the revelation that you and he at one point were um, in some form of, dare I say, romance? How, could, how can this be? How can you still be around him after the relationship that you once had? I, I, I can't fathom it. If there's anything you could say to put my uh, tired, straining mind at ease about all of this, I would be most welcome to hear it, but I fear there is nothing that you could possibly say to make this right. Stir, 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 stir. <laughs> um. And, and, and Lempster probably reaches out again to kind of calm down the stirring and says, uh, Abigail, um, one thing that I, I can say that, that should cause you some, uh, some solace is um, whatever, you know, Nathaniel and I, what our, you know, friendship was uh, in the past, it, it's clear that uh, Nathaniel has uh, his mind and focus set on other matters. I, I had heard that, that you and, and him were uh, starting up a relationship and, um, uh, I, I am curious as to why whatever relationship he and I had in the past, why, why that would uh, seem to cause such um, worry for you in the present. It's, it's the reputation. I, I, I bear no grudge against you personally. It's that I am afraid that if I pursue this relationship with Nathaniel, that my own family's good name will be besmirched even more than it has already. My father is um, completely um, uh, racked with a black mark on his own legacy. I am hoping to marry into the Gracefield family, and 
now you on top of all of this, I, 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 I just want reassurance that that whatever the two of you once had is 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 finished completely before I proceed further. And and Lempster gets very close at this point and looks at Abigail right in her eyes and says, well, tell me this, Lady Abigail, what exactly are your feelings for Nathaniel? I, why well, I, I love him, at least I think I do. You, you love him beyond any concern for just your reputation or how other people think about you. You truly feel a connection with Nathaniel. I, I certainly want to love him that much. Well, if, if your feelings for him are true, then that would warm my heart. Uh, you know, Nathaniel deserves somebody who can um, get, bring him happiness. And if your feelings are true, I will make this promise to you. I will do whatever is in my power uh, to make you and him happy. I, I, I think that will land with um, Abigail and she will kind of stop stirring and let the spoon kind of clatter inside of the cup with um, sort of a racket noise. If you mean that truly, then, then I trust you. Um, I will have to take some time to think about this, but um, for the time being, I do thank you for your words and I appreciate your honesty and forthrightness. Oh, and I should mention, this will probably be the close. Uh, it had slipped my mind, but um, Isaac Arkwright uh, sends his regards as well. And that's a good place to close. Awesome. Yeah, so um, uh, yeah, uh, Kieran, if you'd like to spend that monologue token and ask your question, and then we'll probably take a quick break after after that. Um, yeah. It's it's the most basic it's the most basic question to Robbie in terms of like what, what you know how much does he say how much is he saying is the unvarnished truth how, is there any complications there you know what's Robbie really sorry not what Robbie sorry <laughs> sorry you the fact you haven't got your name has made me start saying like I'm so bad with names what does Lempster feel <laughs> as in like you know is Lempster more conflicted than his uh, very sensible words or is is there uh, you know yeah so. Um... I think Lempster's monologue, um, you know, he, all right, Lempster says, why is the world always revolving around reputation, right? It, 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 uh, it seems to be such a restrictive, uh, restrictive thing. Um, it's fortunate that I at least have my family and its standing and stature to provide me with some cover. So if I must be a kind of lightning rod uh, and take on the foolish trifling gossip in order that perhaps others can be happy, then well, I, I won't, I won't shirk that role. Uh, you know, I, um, you know, I, I would be, uh, I, I, I actually find it somewhat amusing, all of this, uh, all of this discussion of reputation. It seems like everywhere that I go, anybody that I take in, anybody I show kindness to, right, that, uh, suddenly you know that that stirs up uh you know gossip rumors innuendos um i can take it though um if there's anybody around here who can take 
uh, take the lightning bolts of bad reputation and survive, uh, I'm, I'm the one who can do that. And maybe in a kind of paradoxical way, it'll only increase my, increase my reputation. I'll be the man of, of mystery, of gossip. Uh, that kind of clothing maybe suits me well. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Cool, so yeah, we'll take a quick break here. So if we come back at five two, um, and then we'll pick up with, with any more scenes we want to do in this, this novel chapter. Um, and, uh, but yeah, see you all in a few minutes. Cool. So uh, yeah, um, we will um, pick uh, pick up with. Uh, well, I'll I'll go to um, Ava first. Was there a scene um, you would like to uh, to to frame up um, in this uh, uh, this novel chapter? Um. It's tricky, like it's depending, a lot of it depends what the final, uh, the big scene we're looking at is. I mean, it, like there's various things set up, like the jewel, but a lot of that can probably be dealt with the epistolary stuff. I guess it's like something with Nathaniel, like there's some manner of heart to heart might be required here. Um, or we could go in harder. Um, I mean, I could literally, uh, with my other character, I could literally, I, I'm be, I know I'm being blackmailed and just give us that as a setting. Set up, no, I'm being black, black not by modesty, um, or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Nath you know, Nathaniel, will get anything? Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I'm not, I, I'm not sure we have to do it. I mean, it, it could be part of the of the epilogue, um, but I think it would be nice to have an actual conversation. I think, yeah, yeah, that would be. Uh, I, I would like that. Yes. So uh, I think maybe, <laughs> maybe we're both out feeding the peacock. I was about to say, if you want to set up, I think I might be trying to tell you how to feed the peacock. That's a quite yeah, kind of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I've, caught, I've invited you out and I need to explain to you how to feed the peacock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's excellent. <sighs> Drizzle outside, peacock looking at us confusedly. Nathaniel, this is the end that food goes into. <laughs> yeah, that yep. much I had figured out. You're a man of the world, Nathaniel. I'm sure your travels in Europe would have taught you many things. <sighs> to be honest, this it, it mostly looks after itself. You feed it, you clean up after it, uh, you ensure that, you know, it, it allows it, you, you ensure that it's able to strut and preen to its heart content. Um, that, that, you know, you're simply there for it. That, that's all you need to do for a peacock. She that says sounds, in a way that uh, definitely isn't loaded. <laughs> that sounds uh, uh, sounds like it could describe uh, many other creatures as well. I, I, I knew you were growing, brother. I, I have... Um... Nathaniel, where are you right now? It's been, it's been a long time, you know, I feel once, once were we ever close? <laughs> it seems like, you know, you are, you have opportunities and experiences which are never, would never be allowed for me. But I, like, I'm sure there must be a time we must have been close. How are you now, Nathaniel? I, um, I think I am... Um... I think I am ready to uh, to move forward uh, on my own uh, without without dragging 
uh, our whole family with me everywhere I go. Um, I do not include you in that, um, even though we often disagree on everything. Um, you are still my sister and uh, I, I do care about you. Thank you, brother. And I don't know, I, I feel that I have spent a significant part of my time and energies ensuring there's a house here that can maintain. And I'm glad, you know, I'm glad to, I sense that perhaps now you can maintain it. You can in fact feed the peacock, even if you remain, to, if you remain, you may feed the peacock, even if you remain one. <laughs> I fear that you'll have to do it without me. Uh, I fear that, um, I've made an awful mistake and I'm trying to make it well. I have a certain person who has, um, who is in a position of power over me, uh, which is of my own doing. This is my, you know, this is my cross I've made myself and I will carry it to the hill. Uh, the, they will attempt to use this against me. Uh, when they do, I will get father to actually remove me from the house, uh, you know, and, uh, then I, you know, I will be properly, uh, <laughs> you know, I will be safely exiled uh, and the house will be safe. And that's why you need to look after it, my brother. I, this is, this is most distressing. Um, are you sure there is nothing that can be done about it? I'm not sure. Not that I would ask of anything. It is that uh, I've, what I've done is fell into the hands of a vengeful and wicked woman. <laughs> um, I'm sure. I fear I'll end, with luck I will end some manner of housekeeper. Or perhaps I'll become a nun, convert and become a Catholic. Um, you know, there are worse fates, I suppose. I'm sure surely one heaven is as good as another. I... If things turn out as they look, then father's house will not be the only one uh, in the family. Uh, and I would, I, would ab I would absolutely not see you degraded in, in such a manner as to have to take up employment <laughs> with someone else. I'm sorry, it's just hard to, <laughs> to keep a straight face. When... <laughs> so, I mean, probably, yes. Obviously, it's, it's much better when I do it not for money rather than for money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I always imagine like her reaching because I'm at a picture is much shorter than you. I, I describe as a little musket ball, and you're quite tall, I imagine. Like, so almost she reaches up and touches your face in that kind of way. And oh, brother, <laughs> you're made a fool in so many ways. Um, feet, I, sorry. I just if the, if there is no way that I can can assist you in uh, in deflecting these. Uh, um the, this pressure then i will certainly do all i can to make sure that you are uh can at least uh live in comfort whatever whatever is done must be done surreptitiously if if there is any any hope at all uh we have several cousins and uh, they, you know this is we have several cousins who are as yet unmarried uh there's there's um there's certain splash damage upon so splash damage is not the right Jane Austen word. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there was there was a certain uh, aura uh, and uh, a miasma that will follow uh, our family, and I wouldn't hate that any of this particular smell will affix to any of them, which of course has always been my goal. There's an irony that I am now at greater risk of actually befouling their reputation than you ever were. Ah, oh, Nathaniel. I, I strongly doubt that uh, anything you uh, may or may not have done could be worse than any what, what father and and uh, Augustus get up to on any given uh, day of the week. Um, she I, oh, sorry. sorry, she smiles and says, "One, 
uh, two significant difference. There's two significant points here, brother. One, uh, I, I'm a woman and you are men. And the rules are very different for us and always have been. And two, it really isn't meant to be a competition. <laughs> <laughs> um, true. Uh, uh, life uh, is not always fair to the fairer sex. Mm. Um, still, uh, if there is anything I can do, then, then please uh, do not hesitate to to ask me. I uh, I will um, I will do uh, uh, whatever I can to to help you. Good. All I all I need is you to be upstanding, Nathaniel. Thank you for your time. Feed the peacock. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm. She's finished there. Awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, were, were there any other scenes that we wanted to uh, get into before we go into our next um, epistolary uh, phase? Um, I'm just trying to think what we covered last time and what. Um, I just want to, to make sure that we have plenty of time for the, for the big scene. Uh, I don't feel like there's anything for me that's necessary before then. Yeah, sure thing, sure thing. Um, and I was actually just wondering if we wanted to take a, uh, just a quick moment to to talk about what what we would like to see for that final uh, for our final novel scene. Um, um, d does anyone have any thoughts on what our kind of big a big final event could be. We obviously had the suggestion of of like the duel could be something um, that might be quite uh, fun to see on screen. Um, we obviously have the the the, the potential of, of jumping a bit further ahead and going for like you know Lady Abigail and Nathaniel's wedding or something like that. But we can also cover that in like an epistol epistolary um, or I should say epilogue phase at the end. Um, but yeah. Um, any 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 thoughts uh, on, on what people would like as as a kind of big climactic uh, uh, scene? I like the duel. I can throw in one vote for that. Um, awesome, awesome. That? Yeah. I mean, like, the father has to come back, and you know, and uh, if we do want to do the duel, I'm just thinking like obviously the father coming to play in the duel. The fact that he disappeared from a duel does give it a certain circularity. Like, I mean, I mean, like, also, I'll be very fine doing the jaw just in a letter because I have a comic ending that, you know, that, you know, the guy would just write a letter saying, I'm sorry, I'm busy for the jaw now. I'll do it another time. You know, like, if we wanted to get out of it, you know, we, the jaw is fun, but not necessary. But it's, you know, would get people together in a different way. I, it, I think we all want to see more of Brutus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, excellent. That, that that sounds good. I think then the jewel is a good good point for us to come to. Um, obviously, we we have our, our um, next epistolary scene uh, phase first. Um, but yeah, we will d do it with a mind to our sort of final novel scene being uh, being the goings on around the jewel. Uh, awesome. So with that said, uh, oh, so we. Um, we do not have a rumor and scandal phase. We do still technically have a reputation phase for this uh, last scene. Um, I'm just going to go very quickly through this. So, um, yeah, um, Eva, do you think you have any? Uh, you have gained any positive or negative uh, reputation traits for this uh, this last scene? I was going to say, I thought, I thought it looked like Karen had frozen there. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, so in, in the meantime, while, while uh, we're waiting for uh, waiting for Karen to get back, um, uh, Nathaniel, do you feel like you have uh, gained or lost any reputation for, the, for your, the, the scene we've just had? No. Yeah, fair, I think. Um, I, I would be in the same position. I don't, I don't think I don't think so particularly. Um, well, actually, maybe I think I 
No, sorry, I didn't publicly defend any member of my family. I spoke no, well of my sister, that's... but just for her and the people. So. It, exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah, that's fine. Um, no, that's perfect. Um, uh, Lady Abigail, how about yourself? Not that I can think of. I mean, you could make a case for being kicked out of the house as acting in obedience to society's conventions despite hardship in doing so. Um, but otherwise, I don't really see anything, and I'm happy just leaving it as is. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's fair. That's cool. Um, and uh, oh, that's that's coming back again. Cool. Um, and uh, yeah, um, uh, Lumpster, do you feel like you've gained or lost any reputation uh, for that past uh, scene? And um, welcome so, back, Kieran. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. It just crashed. Yeah. I. I mean. The scene in the in the inn. Um, I mean, he wasn't. Uh, I, I I don't know how many people would have would have been there to to kind of see him. I mean, he was uh, not acting like a a a proper gentleman uh, should. But I I also don't know how you know. Um, yeah. How much notice that would have taken. Yeah, that that's fair. I think if you feel like you think it warrants a, a negative reputation, take them by all means, take one. But if not, then then that's that's fine. I, I, I think uh, up to your judgment on that one. Um, cool. Uh, yeah. So come back around, um, Ava. Do you feel like you uh, have gained any positive or negative reputation for that, that last scene? Oh, sorry, you're muted. Since I did that, this, I think I probably have because I would include my letter scene and that just because, you know, you probably need a reputation tag for being an admitted forger. Yep, that is very yes. fair. Yeah. And that is definitely acting, a positive tag if you're acting duty of morality in a way that compromises your desires. That's a so. They just have to defend your own desires. Actually, maybe I get a positive tag on acting in the, the service of duty of morality in a way that compromises your desires because, you, you know, I, I've only done it because I have a sense of duty. Yeah, but I definitely I act, acted in contravention of society's conventions, as in claimed everything I've done. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think it's probably both a positive and a negative one for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll work out what tag to do. But yeah. that pushed me to triple negative, so I'll work out what my other tag is. Cool. No, no worries. No worries. Awesome. So yeah, with that, we will go on to our next um, uh, epistolary scene. Um, so. Um, yeah, does anyone have an idea for uh, their first scene that they would like um, uh, like to um, um, like to frame up? I. I kind of feel like Nathaniel would have to write to Lady Abigail. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I have something. Um, dearest Abigail, um, I am most distressed to hear about your uh, present situation. Um, I cannot believe that uh, Mrs. Honeyfield would be so cruel as to um, evict you from, from your home uh, like this. Um, however, her breaking off, uh, her, her, breaking, uh, her, her breaking off her uh, connection with you also presents uh, a practical problem if we are to um, continue to co continue into a, a formal engagement as uh, I do not know uh, of any other of your relatives who to whom I could make uh, state my case or yeah however you would you would actually express that. Um, I had hoped that we could uh, 
move forward swiftly, uh, assuming, of course, that this is also your uh, your wish. Um, any advice uh, from you on this matter would be most welcome. Um, I hope to be able to visit you uh, very soon, uh, but unfortunately, my sister has me feeding the peacock, and uh, I uh, uh, and uh, handling other uh, practical matters uh, as she is um, as she expects to be unable to to discharge uh, those duties herself uh, from. Uh, near future. Um, yours, um, Nathaniel. Awesome, thank you. Um, I think um, I've got an idea for just a little uh, weather um, uh, interlude. Um, so I think it's a um, um, a sunnier day again. Um, it's it's by a, a small, um, uh, fast flowing river, quite shallow, sort of coming down through the stone of the uh, hillside. Um, you know, sun coming down through the leaves and the trees around, and um, um, uh, Isaac is um, uh, stood on. Um, like a series of stepping stones um, across the river um, in um, just sort of in his uh, in his shirt sleeves and uh, uh, britches um, and he's um, he's got a, a, um, a dueling sword um, and he's kind of we've got almost that like you know martial arts film montage thing of him kind of um, uh leaping back and forwards between the uh the stepping stones practicing sort of uh, flourishes with the sword um awesome uh so uh yeah does does anyone else have an idea for uh the scene they'd like to for their epistolary or their first epistolary um scene i'll jump on one quickly just a brutus letter uh brutus writing to isaac this time Isaac, you old, old, old fellow. What you, I'll tell you what you're doing on Saturday. Allow me to correct. What you're doing on Saturday is uh, being my second. Uh, you know, the least you can do after basically your, your slightly buffoonish person you introduced stood up for you. You should at the very least stand there, carry my weapons. Not sure whether it's a sword yet or a pistol. He's been very bad at writing. Anyway, either way, I hope you can be, you know, you'll be there and uh, hopefully see what happens when, you know, you cause all this trouble. Anyway, good luck with finding a woman. Uh, yours, uh, Brutus. Perfect, perfect. Um, awesome, yeah. Um, uh, Abigail Lempster, the three of you have a uh, um, a uh, an epistolary you'd like to uh, kick off with? I, I might just respond um, back to Nathaniel and in so many words say that um, he need not worry about um, the current uh, state of um, my well-being, um, that I am uh, safe with Lemster at this point, and I do not wish for the um, disgraceful behavior of the Honeyfield family to in any way impede the um, de <laughs> destiny that we have before us. Um, and, and so in so many words, I'm giving Nathaniel kind of an okay to proceed. Um, if, if that works for everybody. Awesome, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so um, I have a, an epistle uh, from uh, Lempster to uh, Lord Brutus. Uh, Lempster is, is writing this uh, on a, a, a very, uh, weathered hilltop uh, of of some ancient uh, hill nearby, but it has uh, it has a few um, uh, a few kind of standing stones that are uh, arrayed around the hilltop, and uh, 
Lempster says, uh, Lord Brutus, um, I'm, I'm happy to uh, engage uh, with you in whatever weapon uh, you might choose. But uh, if you choose the weapon, I choose the place. Um, you know that, that weathered hilltop close by uh, my estate, that's, uh, that seems like uh, it might be the uh, fitting and appropriate place of your embarrassment. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so yeah, um, uh, we'll go around for a second go. Does anyone have an idea for the second uh, um, uh, scene they would like to show us? Yeah, I have one for Nathaniel. Um, uh, a weather scene, it's uh, early morning. He is uh, out on the moors. Uh, I think he's been walking uh, since uh, since before dawn. Yeah, he's been up early, uh, feeling quite uh, vigorous um, or energetic. And he, he's been out walking and now he's uh, sitting down uh, by a rock, watching the, the sun uh, go up. Um, um, and he's holding, uh, he, he's pulled out uh, a letter. Um, I am, um, ev everything seems to be going uh, well for me now. Uh, with this, and, and the letter uh, is from the lawyers who have, uh, I'm going to spend a token on this, uh, they have cleared up uh, the, the questions about uh, the legalities regarding the, the, uh, the other, the inherited estate. Um, with this property uh, now fully uh, in my own uh, possession, I, Need no longer suffer the uh, uh, suffer under my family. Uh, I can um, I can be my own uh, my own man. Um, and if everything uh, resolves itself regarding uh, Abigail, then I need not be so lonely either, perhaps. Um, I do wish uh, my sister would, would tell me what it is that is haunting her, but I'm sure that too can be resolved. Um, yeah, I, I think that's it. I have spent a token, I only have 12 left. <laughs> Perfect, perfect, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so do, does anyone else have their, their second uh, um, epistolary um, uh, scene in mind? Could we have a short um, vignette foreshadowing of the um, arrival of uh, Abigail's father? Absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, something like coming to class, like it's a stormy, kind of rainy night, and a carriage pulls up to town in the dead of night, and you just see the shot of a boot stepping out into the mud, and, um, you know, some hired hand says, right this way, Mr. Nash, or something, or Lord Nash, or something to that effect. Um, but we get the scene demonstrating that he's back, if we'd like to go ahead and introduce him in the end of this series. Awesome, yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds great. Um, perfect. Um, I think um, um, 
Yeah, actually, I think I'm going to um, uh, have a from Isaac to um, um, to uh, Ava um, that says. Um, um, dear, um, uh, dear Miss, um, um, dear Miss Gracefield, um, I do apologize that I have not, um, uh, yet had the opportunity to, uh, um, uh, call upon you socially. My, um, the last few days have been somewhat, uh, um, uh, somewhat of a blur. Um, the, I am, Uh, I am attending. Um, I am attending a duel um, uh, on the morrow, um, where I'll be acting as second. I have no particular concerns to my my own safety or those of uh, my my fellows. I'm sure the the matter will be quite uh, a gentlemanly affair. But um, once that uh, once that has been resolved, um, perhaps we could. Um, uh, perhaps I might uh, might be able to. Uh, call upon you if if that would be uh, amenable to you. Um, yours, uh, uh, um, Isaac Arkwright. I have a, a short letter from uh, Lempster to Nathaniel. Um, uh, Lemster says, uh, uh, "My old friend, um, you may you may know that I have been um, been uh, graced with uh, uh, Lady Abigail's uh, presence uh, due to some uh, unfortunate uh, personal matters." She. Uh, she was uh, looking for uh, a place where she could uh, clear her mind and uh, get a sense of her equilibrium. Um, I, uh, I am quite happy that uh, she seems to uh, have taken an interest in you. My, my one regret is that uh, her mind is, um, is worried about kind of rumors that have have swirled about regarding um, our relationship. Um, I've assured her that I will do whatever I can to uh, to kind of put put those worries uh, to rest for her. Um, and uh, I will also want to pass on that her feelings for you uh, do seem. Uh, at their heart to be true feelings. And for that, I am genuinely happy. Awesome, thank you. And I'll jump in a letter, my last second one very quickly, very brief letter in very, um, very curt, like the, the, it's written on a paper and the, the pen's almost gone through the paper. It's that kind of um, streak, uh, straight lines. It says, uh, Ms. McCormary, I will not be doing anything you wish. Uh, I understand that my fate is in your hands and it would take an act of God to spare me, but it's to, God I, it's to, it's to God's hands I put myself in. Uh, good day to you, um, Eva Gracefield. Awesome. So um, I think that brings us to the conclusion of um, our epistolary uh, scenes there. Uh, so our next step will obviously be to go into the um, into the, our final novel chapter. Um, so essentially, what we'll we'll have is our final novel chapter, and then an epistolary phase to um, act as like our epilogue, essentially, and that will will wrap us up for for the season. Um, I think. I think if we now take another quick break now before we before we begin that last novel chapter, I'm um, say I come back in about five minutes, and uh, I'll see you all then. Yeah, uh, 
Okay, so um, we're going into our final novel chapter. And um, yeah, um, so um, uh, let's, let's um, I guess, just set the scene for this duel. Um, um, I'll throw this over to um, to Lempst first. I think so you, you you were quite explicitly uh, picking the location of this. Um, so uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, so I mean, I'm just imagining uh, probably not a stormy day, but a a, a very kind of cloudy uh, day with uh, a kind of a, a gray steel sky. Um, and it's midday so that the sun is up there, but it's not kind of, you, you know, it's, it's kind of just lighting up the, uh, the clouded sky. Um, and um, yeah, you know, Lempster is, is there um, not really knowing what, uh, it still hasn't been decided whether this is going, going to be uh, pistols or swords or what. So he, Kind of goes up there um, with uh, the the array uh, to see what uh, uh, you know what his uh, what his antagonist has in mind, um, and, and you know it, it is the case I, I imagine that that um, I mean this is not a you, you know it, it it's off a little ways but everybody knows about it. Right at this point, right? I mean that that there there clearly is, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, the the rumor mill has gotten working, and and this uh, this uh, matchup has been, uh, you know, uh, it's not a secret to anyone that this is occurring. And the, just a question to sort of like make sure I understand. We're not like why was the re the exact reason why Lady Abigail, you know, that Lord Nash was sent away because he shot at the wrong time, or was he just like, I don't, or was it because it was a duel per se? Because I thought I thought I wasn't quite sure whether we're doing duels are actually illegal <laughs> or not. And obviously, in my head, it was like duels are just not meant to be done. Uh, so, so like the the, the, t the tension here is interesting. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm playing it. Like, I'm fine with whichever way we go, really. I, I, I'm fine either way. I was under the impression that the duel was sanctioned, but there was some impropriety on the part of Lord Nash. Um, I don't know what the most historically accurate um, scenario would be, though. Your past historic accuracy, I think. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, it's It's... It's very confusing anyway, even the, 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 the legal states of duels, even at the best, of, unless you go back to like actual medieval stuff when it was like literally the court said, yeah, this is a legal duel. It's, yeah, it's all very um, much uh, custom rather than anything else. So yeah, it, it's, um, don't need to worry too much about historical accuracy on that front, that's, that's fine. Cool. Um, yeah. So. Um, uh, so I guess yeah. Um, if. if uh, um, who else is sort of going to be publicly in attendance here, um, or watching from the sidelines, or you know that that sort of thing. Um, I think Isaac is obviously going to be here um, and uh, um, will be acting as um, uh, as Lord Davenport's second. Um, um, I guess, yeah. Who who else? Who else do we think uh, uh, is going to be on the scene? And we can obviously always drag people in as need be, but um, Daniel um, will definitely be there, and I suspect. He will have offered to be Lempster's second. Um, I, I can be there um, tearfully begging Lempster and Nathaniel not to go through with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah. And um, we'll, well, obviously, we'll have Lord Davenport um, uh, there. Do, do you think um, 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 Eva will be there as well? Probably not. I was planning to have her arrive halfway through dramatically. It's like I was sort of presuming it'd be more secret, so it'd be like her arrival would be a deal. But as it's more public, it's like she could turn up for any reason, you know. Yeah. Like, um, like this would be fine. Um, like, yeah, her turning up as a, as a um, she strikes as someone who's going to arrive. Like I described her as a musket ball in the original first session, so it just seemed that we put that on the mantelpiece. Uh, but yeah, that, obviously I'll play like Brutus until shit goes down. Cool, cool. Yeah, no, that sounds good. <laughs> perfect um yeah so um um i guess yeah as as lord davenport uh makes uh makes his appearance um isaac will will go over and begin to assist with whatever he needs assisting with isaac ask him whether it's pistols or swords or whatever uh <laughs> Of course, I'll um, I'll I'll go in there, uh, and I'll I'll head over to um, um, to um, uh, Nathaniel, um, and say, um, has there been a decision made on on um, uh, whether it will be with uh, pistols or swords? Uh, I believe since uh, uh, Lamster chose the place, it's up to Lord Brutus to to pick the weapons. Of course, I'll go and relay that back, um, and yeah, I'll, I'll relay that message to, uh, to to Brutus. I'm so distempered. I am so distempered in rage. How does he expect me to concentrate on such a um, like a decision of like decorum or manners? I all swords, swords. It's the old-fashioned one, you know, gunpowder. Good. At least I'm wearing red. He's wearing a like this bright, you know, like he, he's probably served in some format. So there's a lot of brass, a lot of stuff going on. You know, um, I'm sure I can pull off a, a saber wound in this if it comes to it. Of course, I, I, I'm, I'm sure you would uh, look quite dashing, uh, even if um, maimed, um, uh, Brutus. I think um, I would actually. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, again, um, we'll we'll relay that message to uh, to Nathaniel. Yeah, who will uh, come a bit further to to uh, Lamster? Yeah, and, so and I, <laughs> I said I, I, you know, Lemster on hearing that will you know say I well, um, swords it is, um, and you know I I think that that Lemster pulls out like a couple swords and and they are clearly um not of i mean they, they look exotic um that they, they do not look uh english or even particularly european um but yeah kind of a very kind of different balance and appearance and and some nice kind of metal working on it but it's it's uh you know not not the kind of uh, weaponry that would be uh, of this of this area. I see. And, uh, you know, he says, I, "I wonder if he'll accept these as one of these as my swords." I'm I'm quite fond of them. Mm. Like Brutus is looking confusedly. I, I said swords, what, not whatever those frilly objects are. You know, uh, a good you know a good four foot of uh, English steel. That, that's what we need right here. Not that continental cutlery. Yeah, and and Lempster is is really kind of picked one of these as as his favorite, and you can kind of see him, yeah. you know, starting to kind of warm up with them, and and it's, uh, you know, he he seems to be very at, at comfortable and at ease with uh, with this piece of metal. So Brutus, I believe that. Uh... The, the the sword that uh, Marwood has uh, selected is uh, a good enough match uh, for your own. Very well. Do you agree, Isaac? Um, it certainly seems to be a sword. 
Um, and I, I think that's all that's required uh, in these matters. Isaac, make, make, make sure Borges is aware that he can back down anytime he wants. Um, of, of course. Um, and, anytime at all. Um, uh, um, yes, uh, Marwood, if, if you do wish to um, uh, um, uh, refuse now, we can still, we can still uh, do so. And this need not come to any uh, unpleasantness. Uh, if, 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 if there's any backing down I, I need, it will only be to, to set up uh, a repost or a lunge. <laughs> well then. Uh, what, what, what rules are we playing by? Rules? Um, well, uh, I, I'm, I'm familiar with various um, kind of, you know, uh, manners of, of duels. Uh, uh, Lord Davenport, I, I, I leave it to you. Um, uh, we have a nice, a nice spot here and, and, you know, Lempster will walk off to the kind of center of the, you know, these few standing stones that are up there and says, uh, you know, it's, it's fairly, uh, fairly good ground here. Um, you know, you don't need to, uh, worry about, um, tripping or stumbling, uh, or, or maybe that's a, maybe that's a, a negative for you, Lord Davenport, it'll give you less, less room to, uh, to, uh, explain away, uh, you know, why you, uh, why you were, um, bested by me that you don't have, you know, the kind of uneven ground or something like that to, to complain about. The sun in my eye. It's, it's, it's a very cloudy day for such things. Hmm. If I may interject, I, uh, I assume uh, we're uh, stopping at first blood. That would seem, uh, see, seem the um, most sensible course of action, yes. Also the, the one uh, least, uh, least likely to, to draw any uh, unfavorable uh, attention from, uh, from uh, judges and, and whatnot. I, I, I'm happy with first blood, provided it's not self-inflicted. That, that is an old trick that I know very well. <laughs> That's what I say, like, uh, I suppose, I would imagine, like, literally Brutus is kind of maybe angry at this point, and almost like, and like Brutus goes for you in that guy. Well, you know that old, do you know this old trick? He says, starting the fight. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how, how the fight starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think that's like, uh, you know, I, obviously I'm not spending a token at this, but like kind of, I just imagine them going in, I imagine you completely <laughs> being ready because you're good. <laughs> right, right. The, the sabers are clashing now. Right, right. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, I, I think, you know, um, Lempster is not going to totally underestimate Lord Brutus, but it's also kind of clear that that at the start of things that uh, Lempster is measuring him up, and and I don't think is is um, you know you can see him and he and he seems pretty comfortable with uh, the way uh, the fight uh, goes initially. Yeah, I always kind of want. Can we move to other conversations whilst the fight's going on? Like just the idea is actually going on quite a bit. These are not complete useless people. So just what you know, this yeah. is kind of like the backdrop of all these romantic conversations, just as a kind of the clashing of blades. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm definitely topless. I've checked, I've took the top off before the fight started because my mum has asked for it, and there's no reason that this is not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, Isaac's you know stood st at the side, uh, holding holding the um, jacket with with a probably a. Somewhat long-suffering look. Um. Can um, can um, can I spend a token here uh, to have um, Reverend uh, Collingwood show up 
Um, he got the news late and is screaming and yelling, trying to get this senseless show of unchristian <laughs> violence to stop. And one of the seconds has to intervene and drag him off or something like that to prevent him from running into the middle of things. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nathaniel will will uh, go up and, and stand in his way and uh, sort of shift side to side to keep him from from moving forward. Uh, <laughs> Just gently kind of keeping a, a wall between him and everybody else, but not actually laying your hands on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Reverend, but uh, I believe that uh, intervening in the proceedings at this at this time would uh, only increase the risk of, of uh, fatal injury. And I hope you don't want that on your conscience. That's a compelling argument. You're just going to make things worse. Talk about making make things worse. I suspect this is when Eva has to turn up if the vicar's arrived. Because I imagine the vicar, she knows about the bout. She would have told the vicar. So it's almost like it's the second wave of angry people. Because uh, she's, she's shorter and slower than him, but more irresistible. Nathaniel, <laughs> you will step out the way this very second. You know what happens with Jules. It, it's already in motion. Uh, you can you, you see they're jumping and, and waving their their blades about. It's yeah. uh, it's better to let them let them finish. Let them finish and end up in hell. <laughs> Nathaniel, please, I thought you better than this. They're not going to hell for this. Uh, maybe something else, but uh, but uh, not for this. They're not going I to kill each other. I understand you're, you know, you're, you're friendly with this. Because I'm going to spend the token to make sure I know about it properly, if that's okay. It's like you're courting at Nash. I understand that you believe that, you know, my simple honesty uh, led to some rift between our family. And you, uh, you, and then with this on your mind, you're sorry. With this in your heart, you now allow another duel to happen. <laughs> it's like it's not a question are... of whether I allow it. This this duel was going to happen. Uh... Uh, that's way. true. Of course, you had no way of influencing them in any way, Nathaniel. You absolutely, you know, you are the, you are Lempster's friend. You are a man of great strength and can empower in the community. And me, a tiny and very angry woman, <laughs> could you know step out the way and let me talk to them. I will give them a few, you know. If you think you can argue with two men who are uh, trying to uh, trying their best to uh, to uh, stick a sword in each other, then uh, I'm sure you can yell at them from here and, and they listen just as much as if you're uh, standing next to them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something with Eva, actually. Uh, if, I'll offer you a token for this. And Eva says, my, and, uh, my God, you've let the peacock out as well. And literally do the, the peacocks over there and go around you routine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll take that token. Marvellous. Um, I was like, I know he's like, and I always say like, I think Eva's going to just try to get in the way, and I'm going to use my martyr tag uh, to try to literally stop the fight and, and get in between and stop the fight, not fully, but it might literally do this and kind of like, gentlemen, stop trying to murder one another. Is, is this a duel to first blood? It's like first blood is literally last blood. You have weapons of murder in your hands and evil in your heart. Lempster, I I didn't think you were better than this, but I think. And what are you? What what pretty ninny are you, my friend? Uh, she says to the Lord thingy. <sighs> well, I'm not sure what's happening now. Um, I think this is a point where um, Isaac's going to sort of come and say, uh, uh, Miss Miss Gracefield, um, it's not safe for you to be uh, be here with all the blades and the like. Um, please, do 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 come away. I, I was going to offer that you know, with with Eva coming between them, um, you know, we have Isaac who's trying to um, um, kind of intervene as well. 
but um, I think, uh, you know, may maybe because of some l like lunge that Lord Davenport makes um, and, you know, now being, you know, Lemster having to kind of keep track of multiple people, I, I, I think he wounds Eva by mistake. Like the first blood is drawn, but it's, uh, it's uh, uh, not, not going to be a deadly wound, but a, a, a kind of good gash that, uh, you know, Eva gets uh, on, her, on her upper arm. And Lemster immediately says, halt, halt. Um, uh, Miss Gracefield, Oh my, and, 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 you know, Lempster is kind of going over to, uh, to immediately uh, kind of attend to this, uh, uh, this unintended wound that he's, that he's made. Yeah, and I'm going to spend the token uh, to say that this, this, the, the crowd definitely turns against uh, Brutus. Uh, they see this as a, as a, as a dishonorable, uh, act on his part. And Dan, Davenport's, but she, I said, if it wasn't my character, I would completely make it spend a token on Davenport to make him fall in love with Eva at this point. <laughs> 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 Having that moment of like, what have I done? But he's not, so I'm just going to carry on, you know, I'm going to carry on leaning into the uh, the monstrousness of it. And this guy, what? It's only, a, it's only a woman and a short woman at that. How dare you shout at me? <laughs> <laughs> This town is like, I, and he's had enough in this guy. This town is literally in, you're inelegant buffoons. To think I came here looking for a bride. Isaac, you can have them all. Good day to you, he says. And probably leaves, I think. Unless, does that feel yeah. right? Yeah. Maybe, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe he, he turns. has to leave uh, hastily, perhaps, as, uh, yeah. as there's a, a crowd forming that's, that's uh, not very happy with his presence. Who, who was it that delivered the blow? Was it Brutus? Yeah. Perhaps he turns to make his quiet escape and walks chest first straight into Lord Nash. Ooh. And, and uh, there, there's a, a scene there where Lord Nash kind of gives Brutus his comeuppance, um, having been in that position himself and maybe redeeming himself in the process or something along those lines? I'll be up for that. I mean, I'm, what's that look like? I'm, like, I'm, I'm certainly like, up for Brutus being like brutalized, I guess. Um, I, I, I think, and I'm just kind of speaking this in the abstract, I'm not role playing it, but I mean, I could see Lord Nash um, stating quite confidently because he's had lots of time to study it, what particular rule was violated or what particular illegal maneuver occurred or what the typical penalty for injury of a woman bystander would look like. Um, and uh, then perhaps he proceeds to just like lay Brutus out or, or sick the constable on him or something like that. But the point is there's kind of this reversal of fortune where now Brutus is the one who has committed the great atrocity and you know the the lord nash has redeemed himself by intervening or something to that effect you know any as any gentleman know by law 7.2 the second a woman enters the field of prey a swords must be sheathed that kind of thing you know and like right yeah, yeah, yeah. i love that. that that's actually fun i like that a lot and um on a sort of elsewhere in the scene if it would help to bury the hatchet between the families maybe um lady abigail rushes to eva's side and for the first time is actually trying to attend to her and help her um and i really i'm just trying to get everybody out into the field right now so we can wrap up and close out as many um yeah. side plots as possible i can also spend a token to have um Esther rush out to Lempster's side to make sure he's okay. It's not even necessarily romantic, but it's again burying of the hatchet. And so I know we've had this great conflict, but now I'm so worried for you, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I'll have Esther will rush to Lempster's side, I will rush to Eva's side. And then you have, of course, the conversation between Brutus and Lord Nash. Uh I I think I'd also spend a token to have uh modesty 
follow uh, Lord Brutus with her eyes and say, aha, that's my next mark, and, uh, and uh, rush after him and for forget about uh, all, this other, uh, all this other stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, if I may, I would like to, um, time permitting, burn my monologue token to see how Eva feels about Abigail rushing to her side for the first time since this whole series began. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, go for it. <laughs> oh, it's strange. It's like it's very strange because it's like Abigail. Like, I'm not sure Eva's ever really thought about Na Abigail in any way. <laughs> It's such a weird, like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not just not in a bad way. It's just not a deal for her. <laughs> like she, as far as she's concerned, I don't think she's even aware of the, the weird enmity Nash held for her. <laughs> um, it's like, oh, she seems not. I think I'm slightly faint. That's the other side. Like, the idea, oh, I'm bleeding. That's interesting. Uh, like, oh, I'm slightly faint. Oh, Lady Nash, please, you shouldn't involve, you know, um, after you're, that's that, the kind of like, she's becoming slightly uh, delirious and confused. It's like, oh, Isaac's there. That's nice too. Uh, it's like, oh, this is this all seems nice. Um, and I think probably like the, what she really takes is, oh, I knew she'd be a good, I knew she would be a good woman. Uh, you know, I, I was worried about her when she's hanging out with men like Lemster and my brother. Uh, but now perhaps, like you know, perhaps I see that you know men like Lemster and her, my brother are perhaps not the monsters they, you know, often are. She says, I'm not sure that makes much sense. Uh, but maybe things make less sense than I'm actually presently aware of. She is kind, uh, she's kind and true, and my brother could do far worse. In fact, has. Um, uh, and imagine like just touching, like, uh, like after the monologue would run over, you're sort of touching Lady Nash's hand in this kind of way, and you're a good, you're a good lady. Now, but please stay away from the blood, you know. <laughs> um, is, is that enough? Sorry, I, it's a bit spacey. No, that, that's great, that's great. I'm thinking, I'm thinking kind of, <laughs> One of two things might happen at this point, I, unless there's some reason why it would be good for Abigail to remain in play at this point. I think that um, maybe Abigail hasn't even noticed the blood up to this point. She she thought you just kind of got grazed or something, but then she looks down and it's like quite, <laughs> like, like it's not horribly graphic or anything, but there's quite a bit of blood there. And I think that she sees that and then maybe looks up, sees her dad, and between the two of them, I mean, as long as we're keeping this at least a little stereotypically gothic, I would like her to swoon and fall into Nathaniel's arms. And she'll come to just whenever, even if it's later on in epilogues or something like that. Yeah, 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 Nathaniel uh, catches her and he instantly forgets about uh, about the jewel and, and everything else, and uh, probably even his uh, sister, uh, mostly, she seems to be fine. She, she's, she's probably fine. As, as, a, as a brief little comic interlude, I think uh, out, out, out uh, to the side, uh, you see uh, Edgar step, step out from behind one of the standing stones. He's obviously inebriated he's like swaying and he has like a a, a a goblet of wine but you you hear him then reciting some really poor translation from the Iliad like having to do with like the the battle of Achilles but it's like in this really bad uh English uh verse with like the rhymes that make it seem really kind of trivial but he's clearly kind of thinking about like he's been watching this this battle and is you know there now you know it's brought to mind it's probably his own translation of of like some part of the the iliad of a battle scene that he's reciting now the only one listening is probably the peacock <laughs> <laughs> And I just imagine, like, as I'm lying there and being looked after by various people, it's that kind of seeing Isaac, because Isaac's still there, it's slightly confused, like that kind of, oh, Isaac, but please, hello, I'm Eva, by the way. Uh, yes, you, you seem to be bleeding. Um, let me, yes. um, and I think, you know, realises he's still got um, uh, um, the, uh, the, the, the jacket in his hands, um, will kind of um, uh, tear off um, a sleeve and, uh, you know, 
make an improvised bandage um for for uh, um um uh for Ava um and say so we we must uh, we must get you to a doctor um, immediately that, that, that strikes me as a, a sterling idea. I, I, I must assure you, I'm not the sort of girl who gets stabbed all the time. This is, uh, this is most unusual for me. I'm very glad to hear that. Um, it uh, hardly seems a, 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 um, a, uh, a pleasant hobby to, to take up. Um, uh, um, uh, Miss Marwood, would you um, uh, help me with um, uh, Miss Gracefield here? Yeah, and, and Lempster immediately kind of jumps to that and uh, says, "I, I uh, Miss Gracefield, of course, I, I apologize for at least being part of the cause of uh, of uh, this. Um, yes, I. I um, it doesn't. It, the wound." Uh, certainly needs to be attended to, but uh, it, it, uh, I think it's definitely one that you will uh, recover from. You know, very important right now though, that, that, uh, that we get you, get you away. Thank you, Mr. Marwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Arkwright. You're, you're both far too kind. I'm not used to being cared for like this. Uh, I understand father will accept visitors to actually people who are in convalescence. Uh, she's notes pointedly in Isaac's direction. As she's led away. Awesome. Um, so, do we want any um, any last uh, last moments, or um, shall we move on to um, epistolaries? Let's call in. I think. Um, or is that is that epilogues? Uh, well, yes, yeah, sorry, epilogues, yep. Um, uh, yeah, so I think this, um, I think we'll probably do this the same, the same way, which is to say, you know, if, if, if um, uh, certainly, obviously, it's seen, seen from your, uh, your main character, if you also want to throw in one from a side character as well, that's also cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, um, does it, uh, who, who would like to uh, who would like to kick off with that? Do we have a, a, a wedding, perhaps? Can we do my one first, Rob? And build, like wedding feels like the last one. It is a, as a yeah, scene. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got true. I've got my I've got me lying in my bed. Uh, this is the sort of the gothic scene, and it's this very night. I'm slightly feverish. There's light, you know, it's, it's the storm, which was like, you know, it's it just the, the storm that was building all day. It's building, and the entire things are cloud. And I think about like, oh no, I've I've met I, Isaac. He seems he seems kind. You know, I've uh, Nathaniel's friends are not not bad at all. Uh, you know, I've been I've survived an injury. Uh, my brother is to be married. Everything seems well, except for the fact, you know, that lady still has that blackmail material, and it would take an act of God. To do anything about it and sort of and across the town lightning bolts hit uh the montgomery estate uh and her, her mansion catches fire and burns to the ground removing all evidence of all of this i'll spend that that token as well because i think that is a yeah perfect perfect um i think um I think for Isaac, um, uh, we'll get one of the, um, we'll get another uh, sort of um, letter writing moment. Though in this one, it's not clear exactly who this letter is addressed to. Um, but uh, um, it says, um, I've just, uh, um, I've just arrived in, um, uh, um, in Rome, um, the uh, weather is uh, is is um, uh, remarkably warm um, here, but uh, I am uh, uh, I am adjusting to it. Um, I I begin my um, uh, my work with the uh, uh, with the ambassador in the morning, but uh, I've had the opportunity today to 
um tour some of the uh, some of the amazing uh, uh ruins and uh, and the like of the um uh, of the Colosseum and uh um I hope very soon to uh, to uh um that we might uh, we, we we will um be able to meet one another again but uh um uh I I, I am uh, looking forward to um, making my mark here uh uh yours with great affection um Isaac Arkwright yeah I think uh Nathaniel is writing to Eva uh, from uh, from his inherited estate which he has now taken possession of um it seems from from your previous letter that uh, whatever um, was troubling you has been resolved, uh, and I most uh, most I was most pleased to to hear this. Um, the grounds here are beautiful, so um, I think uh, and I think uh, the peacock will be uh, will be happy if you uh, bring it here when you come to visit. Uh, which I hope you will do very soon. Uh, your brother, uh, Nathaniel. And to clarify, are we doing two uh, epistolary uh, scenes at this point, or is it one for the epilogue, or um, does it change really? Yeah, no, no, it, it can do two if you would like. Yep, yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, I, I think that I mean just for my first, I assume the second is going to be a wedding vignette or something like that. Um, the, the, for for the first, I think I will be. Um, it, it'll really just be kind of a small, cozy um, moment of comfort where I'm actually writing um, for the first time. I think in this whole series, a letter to my father um, saying, "You know, you're welcome to come to my wedding. It has. Um, I've been thinking about you so long, and so on and so forth. You know, my love for you has not diminished one ounce since your um, <clears throat> departure, and we are most glad to have you back. I would." Um, be honored if you would walk me down the aisle and so on and so forth. Basically, the, the point is that she's actually able to speak with her dad. Um, this is, I think, what I'll do for my first one. Awesome. Um, a, a quick uh, letter that uh, Lempster sends to Lord Davenport uh, saying, uh, um, my, uh, my dear old antagonist, um, there were of course many witnesses to your, uh, atrocious behavior on the, uh, at the duel. Um, I know that your mind is already at work, uh, finding ways to dodge and escape, uh, the, the, the disgrace that uh, you feel falling down upon you. Um, I, I know that you're going to do whatever you can to uh, throw the blame uh, in my direction, uh, which is quite pathetic, but um, I'm feeling sorry for you. So I'll assure you that uh, uh, I, I will not myself take uh, any uh, active measures to uh, turn away the the lies and aspersions that you cast my way. Uh, I'm I'm more than uh, 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 you know able to to bear uh, your your petty little darts. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, of course. Cool. So does anyone have an idea for their second um, uh, um, epilogue scene? I feel like for me it would just be the wedding, but we can save that for whenever. That's an established thing. Are we having the wedding at Nathaniel's new estate? Yeah, I think so. Uh, that that seems uh, appropriate. A new beginning in a, in a new place. 
I think it's, I'm going to, I'll, I'll jump on first then. I mean, we're in the carriage, we're tight on my, me and the carriage and I'm writing a letter as in, I'm such a fool, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to a wedding and I will see, you know, I'll see you, you know, dear Isaac, you know, in hours, but I'm writing this letter anyway. Um, we've come so, you know, everything has come so far. Uh, you know, I, I travel a happy sister to my brother's uh, wedding uh, and, and I am happy and he is happy. Uh, what, what a glorious set of events we find ourselves in. At which point the, the camera will pan out a bit and reveal that the peacock is in the actual carriage with her, taking up most of the room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's, the, that's just the, the beat that under, kind of like pushes against it a little. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, um, I think um, I think yeah. What what we'll get actually is a um, um, for uh, Isaac's last scene is yeah the um, uh, Isaac is is um, um, walking up the um, up towards sort of the the drive to the uh, to the estate um and um yeah it's a, it's a nice nice sunny day and it just um uh stops um on, on the way to um just pick a few um a few uh wildflowers um uh, on the way which he um assembles into a um uh, it's just kind of a, a fairly simple um uh bouquet um as he uh, as he then walks up the drive towards the estate and i think that's where we'll uh uh, we'll leave him. Is there anything else before we do the wedding? I, I was thinking that that maybe Lemster would be strangely absent from the wedding uh that that maybe the last that you see of lempster uh he's on a ship uh kind of heading heading off to uh uh you know maybe right off the coast of of a shore that is clearly not english um and uh by his side but uh you, you kind of see from the body language it's it's more of a friendship than a, a kind of romantic relationship, but it's uh, it's Esther Battle and uh, Lemster saying to Esther, um, "I know, I know you have worries about uh, your reputation and what your family uh, might think of this, but you know, you and I have the advantage of of being from well-established families. That they're they're kind of like." like ducks, they, they kind of uh, have to kind of take whatever, you know, water gets kind of thrown on them and has, have, have kind of learned to, to shake it off. So when we finally return, um, I'm sure we'll be able to uh, go back to our uh, families and uh, they'll, as they always do, they'll find a way to, to uh, take us back in. And I, I, I have this idea for, for the wedding and, and David, please tell me if you, if you want something different. But we're viewing it, uh, we're seeing uh, the, whatever room we're in from, from uh, well, from the altar basically. Uh, so we're seeing the, the, uh, uh, the guests and there's a very clear difference between the, the groom side and the bride side. Uh, that uh, the groom side, my side, is uh, it's uh, a mess of uh, of uh, various strange uh, eccentric uh, uh, relatives uh, who have gathered. Um, not uh, not all of them uh, appropriately uh, dressed for the occasion, and but I 
assume that uh, Abigail's side is more uh, conventional, uh, perhaps more, um, more, um, yeah, more, more, more conventional, more, more appropriate. Uh, does that sound about right? Yeah, that sounds lovely. Uh, and I think for for the from from Nathaniel's side, uh, he's uh, looking out uh, over the guests, and you can see that he's, or we we, we understand that he's he's uh, he's missing uh, Lampster. He wished uh, he wishes he he was here as well, but. Uh, He's still when when he turns to look at at Abigail, he's uh, uh, there's there's genuine joy and uh, and affection uh, reflected in uh, in his face. Yeah, that works for me. I I don't even know that I would really add anything to that. That sounds like a, as good a place as any to close out for Abigail as well. She will just return the same look with the same admiration, and it's going to be very a pastoral, idyllic, and cute. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, that is where we will close things up on for for this series. Um, it's been um, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you all. Um, I've I've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I'm going to stop our recording now. So if you've been watching this, thank you.